Emulators are a great way to experience the magic of the past without needing an entire room of old game consoles and games on the walls. And while there are some consoles that are generally harder to emulate than other ones, your choice of emulators is so massive you could sink endless hours of entertainment into these works of art. Being a concept which started out on computers, the idea of a portable emulation console didn't really become big until the successful hacking of the PSP, opening the doors to the wonderful world of emulation. And all the piracy which is frequently blamed for the fall of the PSP. <coughs> but we're not going to get into that. Since the demise of the PSP, many people have been searching for that next emulation console they can take everywhere with them. Something with good controls, selection, ease of use, and above all, portability. But has this answer been in front of our faces this whole time? Something a lot of people weren't aware made such great emulation systems. You might be thinking, really? Android? And yes, hear me out. Even if you don't already own an Android phone or Fire Stick, Android TV box, some kind of device that runs Android, the phones nowadays are pretty cheap. The unlicensed ones obviously are like very cheap, under $100, but you know, if you're looking for something a little bit more name brand, like perhaps like a Samsung, you can get a Galaxy S8 for around 200 bucks now. Enough beating around the bush. Let's get into why there's such great emulation devices. Number 1. Your choice of hardware. Android being the open platform that it is, doesn't find itself restricted to just smartphones. In the past, we've had dedicated Android game consoles that have kind of flopped like the Ouya or these things. In 2020, your best portable choice is a smartphone paired with a gamepad. Since many of these phones are so cheap, you have so much freedom in the choice of what you want to play on and what you want to play with. If you're looking for something for your house, look in the realm of the Android TV boxes like the Nvidia Shield and even Fire Sticks, but you would have to sideload Aptoid TV or uh, Google Play Store onto it so you can get these emulators. When it comes to controllers, you can get Bluetooth, 2.4 GHz wireless, or USB controllers. And you are by no means limited on your choice of controllers. You have all kinds of stuff. You even have high-end stuff like this arcade fight stick here. Number two, your selection of emulators. Mega! Since the Google Play Store is not nearly as restricted as Apple's App Store, you have a really wide variety of emulators at your disposal. From the Commodore and Atari computers to the N64 and PlayStation 1, variety is a plenty. While most of these emulators are free, some of them you do have to pay for. I can't remember which ones because I've probably paid for them a very long time ago. Others just have ad-free versions. You pay like a dollar, remove ads forever, that kind of deal, you know. A lot of them are simple to use yet complex and pack in a lot of features. Like this N64 emulator which allows you to change the plugins and drivers because the N64 is kind of a harder console to emulate and really it's not perfect on any kind of platform. Drastic DS is a great Nintendo DS emulator which lets you use your device's touchscreen. And not only do you have this massive library of emulators just at the store waiting for you, you have the rest of the Google Play Store at your fingertips as well. Stuff like Grand Theft Auto, Vice City, San Andreas, Bully, Dead Trigger, Minecraft, Fortnite, all these games you can use with gamepads as well. Number 3. Ease of Use you could have one device that does everything, but if it's hard to do anything with it, it ruins the experience.
Luckily, Android is not the horrific buggy mess it used to be. <laughs> and gives users a lot of freedom in using the file system and internet. If you want to download a file, you can simply go to the website in Chrome and download it, and then it shows up in your downloads folder. And get this, you can simply move your ROM that you downloaded in the browser. Go to your downloads folder and click it and move it wherever you want. Like, just like a computer. I like to organize my ROMs on my SD card with folders and a little BIOS folder with the BIOS files for stuff like uh, the Game Boy, PlayStation. And if your Android device has a crappy file browser, you can go to the Google Play Store and download another one. Android has pretty good controller drivers built in which carry over to its TV counterparts and easily connects to Bluetooth devices. Setting up emulators is easy and while the more obnoxious emulators that need their BIOS exist, it's not hard setting those up either. Remapping buttons is also easy for consoles like the N64 where you needed three hands to hold the controller. Stuff like the Sega Genesis controller which is nothing really like this, I mean you have a D-pad and the three buttons. What I find myself doing is when I have a console like the Genesis or the Game Boy or NES where you only use two buttons, I'll set the other buttons as turbo ones. Conclusion as of 2020, Android is the best emulation platform we have for portability. Even though you need a PC to emulate harder stuff like the GameCube or the PlayStation 2, you still have plenty of options on Android to play all your retro games on the go. The Nintendo Switch might be the closest competitor to Android after it was successfully hacked. And while the Switch has great controls and a unique form factor, it requires a soft mod to even allow you to get that emulator goodness. The Switch emulators aren't as user friendly and the process of getting there is much longer and more difficult. In contrast to Android, where getting your ROMs, emulators, BIOS, and settings to your liking is much easier. That's all I really have to say about emulators right now. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching.